I hope you all remember my promise that Mega Man X series content was returning, so here we are for my first MMX video in almost two years, and I'm trying something new today. An area my ancient reviews of the first couple MMX games focused on was the 100% experience and the ways to do it with the least amount of backtracking. One person on Twitter asked me to remind him of the least backtracking orders I presented in those videos, and that got me thinking. It would be a pretty cool video idea to go through the X games and make a dedicated video about how I play each game to completion. I see no better place to start than one of my favorite games of all time, Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo. A game that has the word classic oozing all over its iconic level design, power-up, soundtrack, mechanics, and story. I mean, think about it. Before this, Mega Man had six games that were basically the same game over and over, and this game took that foundation and made something so fresh and new out of it. There was no template on how to do this kind of Mega Man game. They just took a shot in the dark and produced one of the most iconic Super Nintendo titles of all time. With that said, how do I play Mega Man X1 with 100% completion and the least amount of backtracking? Well, let's begin and find out the answer, my Maverick Hunters. The intro stage obviously needs no comment in each of the games, as there's no collectibles in any of them until X8. So you beat that, get the setup cutscene with Vial and Zero, and the game begins proper. We must first start with Chill Penguin stage, where X will be guaranteed to find the foot parts from his late and great creator, Dr. Thomas Light. This gives X the ability from either a standstill or while moving to accelerate forward a couple feet. While shooting your standard lemon shots, the increased velocity of the dash will cause these pellets to do more damage. With that knowledge, you are well on your way to passing Physics 101. In each stage of Mega Man X, there's a heart tank which increases X's maximum health capacity, but we can't get the one in Chill Penguin stage, so we must return for it later. Go into the boss door, obliterate the Maverick, and warp out of here with Shotgun Ice, a weapon X puts to great use as it bounces off of walls and enemies, killing the tiny ones in one hit. A great weapon. Next up in the weakness order would be Spark Mandrel's stage, but we aren't doing any of that lame weakness order crap around here. We do these backtracking runs that maximize efficiency. So, we must go to Storm Eagle's stage next as I must soak up this banger playing in the background. Damn, that's good right there. I could listen to it all day. Anyway, ride these platforms to the top and use the dash, which I think is most comfortably mapped on the L button, to jump to the left-hand side of the screen, and here you'll find the first heart tank. Make your way back up to where you just were and keep progressing to the right. Kill this enemy right here. Ride the platform up to this glass window as you can use the X Buster or any weapon you have to break the glass and kill the enemy where the first sub tank is sitting. The sub tank is an alternative to the classic series' E tanks. There are four sub tanks in the game, and by collecting health pickups while your health is full, you will fill the sub tank with energy which can heal you. But be warned, using the sub tank will drain the entirety of its energy, regardless of how much health you actually needed. Back to the game, move throughout the stage, keeping the bottomless pit in mind. As you get to this tall beam, on the opposite side you have what looks like it needs fire to be destroyed, but these tanks can be blown up with the X Buster just fine, and behind them lies the head parts, which X can use to bust blocks which comes in handy in the unaltered version of Sting Chameleon stage and at the next level. Beat up Storm Eagle, and you're granted the Storm Tornado, which plows through almost everything in its path, just not to the game-breaking degree of the Metal Blades in Mega Man 2 as we must make haste to Flame Mammoth's level. Here you can use the combination of the foot parts and the block breaking head parts to gain access to the arm parts. Although be careful, this part does require precise timing. The arm parts allow X to charge his X Buster to a third level and to charge all his special weapons for an extra ability. If you don't get this here, you get it from zero in the first castle stage. However, we are going to need it for many more upgrades, so we must get it now. Since we beat Show Penguin stage, the Magma and Flame Mammoth stage have been completely frozen over, allowing you to walk over and grab the Heart Tank, the second out of eight. At this point where the obvious inclination would be to move right, move left to the far side of the screen, you'll find the second sub tank as well, which you can get with the foot parts. Killing Flame Mammoth will grant you Fire Wave, which wrecks obstacles in Armored Armadillo stage, as we must now use this weapon to go back to Chill Penguin stage and grab the Heart Tank as we get this Ride Armor and use the extended jump time right here to get to this higher route and use Fire Wave to destroy these igloos that house the third Heart Tank. At this point, many players now visit Spark Mandrel stage, but nope! That's not how we roll here. Next up is Boomer Kawanger's level. This level is very simple to get through, as you use Shotgun Ice, Fire Wave, and Storm Tornado to get through these enemies jamming out to the track in the background. Right before the final tower climb at the end of the stage is where the only collectible of the stage resides. 
You can get this by using Kuanger's weapon itself, however this would require a backtrack. So what we're going to do instead is use the arm parts to charge up shotgun ice to create a platform to slide on and use it to jump at just the right angle to reach the ledge and get the heart tank. The fourth out of eight. From there, it's just a matter of beating the stage, as we now must make our way to Spark Mandrill's factory. Since we beat Storm Eagle earlier, his plane has crashed into the factory which causes a power shortage and the first mini boss to be neutered because of it. But anyway, in the early parts of the stage, make your way to the bottom half of these ladder rooms and you'll find the third sub tank sitting behind this wall that you must use the weapon we just got, Boomerang Cutter, to grab. The pattern is a bit random from my observation, so it may take a couple shots, but you'll get it in no time. Boomerang Cutter is an option for getting the heart tank towards the middle of the stage, however using the dash to leap from this wall at the right time will also allow you to get our fifth heart tank and progress to the boss fight as we tear him limb from limb with his weakness, Shotgun Ice. <laughs> Next up, Armored Armadillo Stage. This has always been a really fun level in my opinion, with the mini cart chases and fast set pieces. The beginning of the level is a great way to grind for sub tank energy as these bats love to drop health for you, as the red bat returning from the classic series usually carries extra lives which will come in handy in just a few minutes. Back to the collectibles of this stage, when you make it down to this point where the mechanoloid starts to chase you from behind the wall, make sure you can get behind it as where it came from houses the fourth and final sub tank. By contrast, towards the end of the stage, you're chasing the same model of robot, but you need to destroy it quickly, most effectively done with Fire Wave from my experience. Doing so will leave the cavern intact, allowing you to easily jump up and nab the sixth heart tank, allowing us to progress to the boss fight where his armor is torn off with his weakness, Spark Mandrill's weapon, Electric Spark. This weapon really cleans house with this guy, as otherwise he's a tough nut to crack. But with the right tools at our disposal, he shall fall like all the rest before him. Only two stages left now. First of them, Launch Octopus. This is Mega Man X's water stage, and in line with all the other classic X, Zero, and ZX games, being underwater gives the player the ability to jump super high. However, it is worth noting that Fire Wave is basically useless underwater. As I'd say, Storm Tornado is your best bet to beat the two mini-bosses here. Towards the end of the stage, you'll see these whirlpools going up, and you must use it to ride up to the boat at the top of the water. Destroying it will send it sinking towards the underwater base, creating an entrance for X to battle this swimming mechanoloid. Beating it will grant you some health and access to the 7th heart tank. Octopus himself is another tough battle to face, but using his weakness from Armor Medillo, Rolling Shield will take care of him in no time. Now for the final Maverick stage, Sting Chameleon. Since we just beat Launch Octopus, the water from his stage is now flooding the jungle of this level, meaning that X can get to this pit here and use the foot and head parts to bust these blocks and use the water physics to reach the final heart tank. Right above this is a battle against a guard robot. I don't really have much of a strategy for this one, just spam shots at the X-Buster, Storm Tornado, or whatever weapon you want, and it shall fall soon enough. But the reward is well worth it, as the first armor is finally completed now. The reward in question is the body parts, which reduces the damage X takes by 50%, a must-have upgrade. And with that, we've collected all the main collectibles and can defeat the boss at the end of the stage. As his weapon, Chameleon Sting is fine on its own, but the charge shot with invincibility is the best part. But we're not done collecting things just yet. Now that we've gotten all four Dr. Light capsules, all eight heart tanks, and all four sub tanks, and have defeated the eight Mavericks, we can backtrack to Armored Armadillo stage. This part is not necessarily required to see you fully completed Mega Man X, but I always go out of my way to get it. Simply make your way to the end of the stage and reach the ledge with the health up. Drop into the pit below and spawn at the checkpoint. Repeat the process four or five times, and then there will be a fifth Dr. Light capsule waiting for you at the spot. The capsule contains the superpower move of Mega Man X1, the Hadouken from Street Fighter. Swipe the D-pad from the bottom up to whichever direction you're facing and X will launch this fireball towards enemies and kills them all in one hit, including boss fights. However, you can only use it at full health, so there is a trade-off here. And with that said, you've collected all the power-ups in this game. If you've made it this far, Sigma's Fortress shouldn't be much of a problem. As a bit of advice, to use the Hadouken on the bosses here, I'd say you should wait until some of their attack cycles have already begun, as this will give you a better shot than firing when the health bar is done loading. Some Maverick refights are also best Hadoukened after using their weaknesses on them for one hit, like Spark Mandrill and Armored Armadillo. And with that, you've made it to Sigma Stage 4, which does it right. It's just one vertical hall with enemies infinitely respawning for you to farm health for your sub tanks and then the boss fight begins. Shotgun Ice, Electric Spark, and Rolling Shield are their weaknesses respectively, and with that, 
We have conquered Mega Man X. This was a more experimental video than ones I've done before, so let me know if you think this format should continue because I do have interesting strategies for X2 and X3 especially. I'd love to share it if you guys thought this video was good and worthwhile. But with that said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.